Today, DMT far exceeds this criteria. So what exactly are dimethyltryptamine's effects on consciousness? It begins very quickly. Uh, you begin to feel different within a heartbeat or two after the uh, completion of the injection. There's a you know, feeling of acceleration and inner psychic tension that begins and builds quite rapidly, almost overwhelmingly. Uh, the you know, visual image of the room, if you had your eyes open, would start to you know, break up uh, in a you know, pixelation kind of pattern. Uh, if your eyes are closed at that stage, it's uh, a display of you know, kaleidoscopic images. Also, during that time, is is a high pitched kind of sound, uh, usually high pitched. You know, it could be oscillating wah 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 kind of sound. It might be you know uh, some you know crinkling kinds of sounds, but it's increasing in in intensity. You know, so it's you know crescendoing which you know, kind of parallels the anxiety or the you know, feeling of stimulation. Uh, and then uh, you just break out of your body. It's as if the internal pressure just can't be held in the body anymore and your consciousness just breaks loose. And you know, that's you know, kind of the plateau between you know, two minutes and you know, seven minutes or so. And then you start coming down uh, and things uh, you know, slowly recond you. The rapidity, intensity, and conventional insanity of the experience has caused word to reach the public through the internet, as well as authors and researchers writing and speaking on the matter. Another hot topic is that DMT is an endogenous compound, meaning it's produced naturally in the human body, and yet no definitive explanation for this has been discovered. There's a huge amount of it in the lungs. That's where most of it is. But it's throughout the, all the tissues in the body. No one knows what it's doing in the lungs. Interesting work is being uh, done right now on the, the endogenous functions. There's a very interesting book just published called uh, Questions for the Lion Tamer. It's about endogenous DMT, and it's relating that to all of these other rather interesting what you might call physiological states which have to do with gamma uh, wave activation in the brain and which DMT can reliably do this. The gamma brainwave state is associated with high level cognitive function and peak concentration as seen in studies with meditating monks and nuns. Gamma waves originate in the thalamus and move back and forth through the three lobes of the brain about 40 times per second. Therefore, it is credited with integrative processing, the flow state that athletes and musicians experience, and improves memory, mood, and seems to optimize many natural functions of the brain. In a society hypnotized by scientific study with the use of external technologies, exploration into the mysteries of the universe using self-observation is seen as inaccurate and flimsy. Answers to our most timely questions, such as who am I, why am I here, and what am I to do, are given only the most conservative answers like we don't know, or that gene hasn't been found yet. Speculation is frowned upon, but psychedelic states or natural highs seem to push the mind into greater curiosity, expanded receptivity, inner contemplation, and wild speculation. Those who seek altered states of consciousness are not doing so to get more of the same. They seek transformation. People of all walks of life go to the blazing hot and dry lake bed of Black Rock City for Burning Man, one week out of every year, not to strengthen their routines and habits, but to dismantle them and see beyond the veil of their own making. In a society touted as being almost completely consumer-driven, people are left to use plants, vacations, retreats, natural and unfortunately not so natural substances to shield their eyes and ears from the onslaught of products and sales gimmicks. The Kogi people of Colombia spend nine years of their formative life in darkness in order to connect with what they call cosmic consciousness. Egyptians had the pyramids, Romans used the catacombs, and even the Essenes in Israel are reported to use extended periods of darkness. All of this to remove the shackles of limited thinking and liberate oneself from the wheel of suffering. John Chavez, author of Questions for the Lion Tamer, 
has pushed the speculative envelope regarding the role of endogenous DMT in telepathy, lucid dreaming, and the overall questions of how much of our biology we can actually control through thoughts and actions. Extended fasting leading to years of inedia or living without food, breath practice leading to world records of 22 minutes without oxygen, breaking the four minute mile when doctors said it was impossible, surviving incurable diseases, unbelievable feats of strength and willpower. All because the human spirit seems to seek beyond conventions and restrictions, and mostly with purpose. To know thyself, not just in theory, but embodied. The psychonauts that long to witness as much as they can on this beautiful planet in these amazingly mysterious bodies do so because the greatest mystery of all is right around the corner, and this life might be their only chance. What truly lies on the other shore when this body dies is a mystery, but glimpses into that world have been coming to light in the form of near-death experiences, and the experience is far closer to a psychedelic journey than one may think. This is magnetite, one of the most magnetic substances on Earth. As you can probably guess, it has a diverse range of uses, from fridge magnets to generating electricity in power plants. But what you probably wouldn't guess is that your brain actually synthesizes these crystals, and you have hundreds of millions of them inside your head. Scientists are still unsure what role, if any, these crystals play in the brain's function. Studies have inferred that it may play a role in long-term memory. It suggests that cellular components of the brain communicate with each other through magnetic signals, with the magnetite particles acting as tiny antennas, simultaneously receiving information throughout the different parts of the brain. Magnetite also acts as an antenna for external electromagnetic fields, including the geomagnetic field of the Earth itself. And this is where things start to get interesting. An enormous body of research is emerging that shows substantive links between magnetic fields and cognitive function. Dr. Persinger has shown in the laboratory that magnetic brain stimulation can create mental states conducive to human telepathy. A recent experiment placed two people at a distance in different rooms. Each was surrounded by an identical computer-controlled magnetic field. When a light was flashed in one subject's eye, the person in the other room showed responses in their brain as if they saw the flash of light. As Dr. Persinger stated, we think that's tremendous because it may be the first macro demonstration of a quantum connection, or so-called quantum entanglement. So let me get this straight. These crystals connect us electromagnetically with the Earth. They're involved in long-term memory and in quantum telepathy. Where do I buy them? Well, the drug dealer would probably say, right here in my pocket. But the researcher, the psychonaut, the flow state expert would say, it's right here, encrypted into our body. There's also something else that our body produces endogenously, not just these crystals, but DMT, dimethyltryptamine. It's one of the most powerful psychedelic compounds known to man, and it's created right here in the human body. Author Dr. Rick Strassman wrote a book, DMT, The Spirit Molecule, explaining all the incredible experiences, mind-bending experiences that are outside of space and time that happen from this drug being injected into them. But we produce it ourselves. Another author, John A. Chavez, wrote a book called Questions for the Lion Tamer. He uses a lot of evidence and a lot of science to support some pretty wild speculations. He even calls the chapter Wild Speculations because he wants to show that evidence can be there to support that we know very little about human consciousness. And he starts speculating that DMT might be very integral to telepathy, clairvoyance, heart coherence, channeling, aha moments, miraculous healings, and even other paranormal phenomena. What is this state that DMT seems to put us in? What is the state that these brain crystals, these magnetite crystals, 
help us enter into. What is that flow state? What is coherence? What is the shamanic and the psychedelic state? What if they are all talking about exactly the same thing? What if we are the limitless pill that we need to swallow? And that limitless pill will open itself up and turn into exactly what we need in the moment if we enter into the right state of consciousness.